Hey there hunters and welcome back to another update for Remnant 2, so we gotta do another video. Now before I start doing build videos again, I wanted to really quick go over the patch notes here in just a short video so people are aware that there is a patch and what changed, and I can give my thoughts on the patch, and then I can go back and dive through all my builds updating them and whatnot. So we're doing patch react day, so let's just dive in. First here is that they fixed the turret and drone alternating their attacks, which is great because that was kind of silly, and now they can both attack at the same time, so those Warden Engineer builds are going to be doing a lot better now, so that's great. They also fixed Invoker's Communion being cancelled, which is cool, so we can actually get our life regen back, and that's going to help a couple of my builds, especially the Infinite Eruption spam. Then moving on to the weapon changes. I'm going to gloss over most of the handgun changes because really handgun damage is just so low. You're not going to consider it outside of like having to swap to it to kill something rather than reload your long gun. Their damage is pretty inconsequential for the most part. So with that out of the way, it's going to take us to the Wrangler. And I've always hated lever action guns. It's just a personal thing, really. Um, but the biggest issue I think most people had with the Wrangler was that the spread on the shots is just really bad. So it looks like that's going to be toned down significantly, so the Wrangler should feel a lot better to use at least. Um, I don't think this is going to be applying to the Rusty Lever Action though, which is kind of what me and Bolt were using. But either way, still a decent buff for the Wrangler. Now the Huntsmaster got a huge buff. While the fire rate and the ammo reserves were reduced by quite a lot, it got a nearly 50% boost in damage, and that's going to definitely put it out ahead for sure. I did already quickly test this in the fire range after I was reading the patch notes, and yeah, on its own it can push like 7k DPS, so I'm sure you can make great use of the Huntsmaster now, you're just gonna have to watch your ammo. But I think something like Master Killer with, you know, Huntsmaster and the Corrupted Rune Pistol, like that stuff's gonna go pretty hard. Now the Black Maw got a slight ammo buff, but that's kinda all, I don't, don't think I'm gonna use that still. Typewriter, which I felt was already a pretty good gun, got a buff to its reload speed, which is appreciated, and it tightens and holds its spread much faster and for longer, so should be easier to sustain that as well. Cool stuff there. Bonesaw got a slight rate of fire increase, and now fires 75 rounds before overheating. And that's cool, but I'll have to test this to see if it holds up compared to like any of the other automatics or boss automatics that we have. Because like it's not like it's a bad gun by any means, it just it has to manage the heat and you don't really gain much besides, you know, just a bigger clip size. So it's hard to say if this is going to be better or worse than picking something like the typewriter, but you know, we'll have to see. Coach Gun, my baby, got a huge fat reload speed buff. And maybe I can use this outside of a Sidewinder build now because 18% reload speed is kind of a lot. And the reduced recoil should make it much easier to handle with things like Bandit or Clip 6 versions of the gun where you're just shooting constantly. I'm gonna have to give that one a thorough testing before I decide anything, but I love Coach Gun buffs, that's for sure. The Shotgun also got buffed, and the coolest part about this is that the max reserves was increased by 2. I guess, but really that's because it helps the Provisioner Ring reload it for the Shotgun Swapper setups. Um, but really the rate of fire, the damage, and the reload speed, all of those little buffs should make it feel a lot better for like the non-swapper setups, which it definitely needs because it's in a pretty bad space if you're not doing that setup. So I love that for the shotgun and maybe, you know, we'll try some different builds with it. You know, we say that, but then we look at the bulldog and dude, this gun is a beast now. This was another gun that I quickly tested at the range and yeah, it's about as nasty the stats make it look. The Bulldog is going to see a lot more use on builds because that fire rate buff is huge. I don't know if it's going to be like the meta shotgun, but it's definitely going to be a very, very solid option. Like it's really good now. Moving on to the Widowmaker, this is another weapon that desperately needed some help, and it did get a really good sizable boost to its damage and recoil, and so it puts out a similar DPS to the Huntsmaster from a quick test, but the biggest thing holding back single shot weapons is the lack of supporting mutators. Slayer is about the best you can do, which really is just reload speed, because I think like Huntsmaster might perform better just because it can run momentum to some moderate success, which is just a much better mutator. But this is still one gun that we're really going to have to test and see in action before we finalize kind of what we're feeling about it. On paper, it looks pretty good, but I don't know if that's going to be enough. Crossbow and Trinity Crossbow. I'm just going to move on past those. I like Trinity Crossbow, but it's not really something I really want to recommend. And I'll play with the crossbows later, but I don't really expect to change my opinions on them with slight buffs here and there. Like, they really, really need to get some big changes. Royal Hunting Bow. This is another big buff weapon, even if it doesn't look like it. Like, it was already the fastest charging bow, and now it effectively got a 10% multiplicative damage boost on its perfect charge, which lets it deal some seriously strong damage in a very, very snappy format. It performs fairly close to the Genesis with corrosive rounds enabled, and in general, it's just a very strong option now if you want to run a, like a bow play style with an open mod slot. 
Like, I know it looks like it barely got a damage bump, but trust me, it's noticeable. And then we have Spore Bloom. Yeah, who's looking at that and not thinking that it's insane? Straight up 25% more damage, less spread, faster reload speed. Yes, please. And yeah, it's that crazy. On its own, with just basic hugs gear and stuff, I was throwing about 9k DPS at the target range. But of course, that's given shotgun range and weak spots, which are very inconsistent. But uh, Spore Bloom is definitely going to be back. Expect to see it on more builds for sure, because it's hitting like a truck. Then we have Star Killer, and I had to do a double take on this to make sure that these numbers are right, but yeah, the mod damage is doubled, and the mod costs got reduced. And there's no way that's not broken, right? Like, there's no way. That's gonna be a build for sure. Stay tuned for that one. Anguish, yeah, so as I expected, and then actually was advocating for the Loathe the Weak nerf, basically we're gonna be kept at 50% increased damage at scales based upon missing HP of the target rather than scaling all the way down to 99%, so you're not gonna deal up to double damage. It's still gonna be an insanely strong mod. The mod didn't get touched, and it's still gonna do all the damage it should up to 50% and then get stuck there. That's fine, no complaints there. But we're also going to get it now for 15 seconds rather than 10 seconds, which means we actually don't need to scale mod duration at all, since we do want it to match the 15 second bullet weaver anyway. So that's going to save us trait points. So I'm all for that. Primary fire looks better, but we'll have to see it in practice. It was already pretty strong before. I just don't know if it's going to overtake double barrel or other things just because of the slight charge on it. Uh, it's kind of annoying to do like charge in a swapper setup or just, you know, do the charge fast. It kind of like hampers your speed a little bit, but we'll have to see. Rune Pistol, overall a little bit better. Solid gun, love the Corrupted Rune Pistol. Always a good option, not much to say there. Athelion buffs are fine. It's hard to get me excited for a weapon like this that has like a primary shot and a mod shot that don't synergize. The damage bump for Athelion might make it a pretty decent option for some of the hybrid damage setups, so we'll have to see about that. But I don't think it's going to be at the top of the meta anywhere. Uh, and that's fine, it just may be a good option for if you're just stacking all damage. Monolith, here's the big nerf. So Sandstorm no longer applies exposure, and when you pair that with the damage nerf Sandstorm already had in the last patch, it's kind of dead in my opinion. I think this is going to be relegated to more of a support weapon now for parties to apply exposure, but this is also a slight blessing in disguise too. Not only can we change our weapons finally, but it now also makes trinkets that apply exposure be more valuable, so things like Echo Chamber. I was kind of expecting this nerf, and yeah, it sucks to see since we're going to have to rebuild all of our builds with it now, but I think it's okay. The Nebula Monolith meta was kind of silly. And speaking of Nebula, let's get into that, because that's the next weapon. And yeah, it's pretty dead now. This is the big kill. So the big thing here, despite the damage nerfs and such, is actually that the Crojans only last 5 seconds now, and the mod duration also got reduced. So you're going to have to invest a lot of like traits and trinkets to get those durations back up to be worthwhile. And at that point, you might as well just run Corrupted Rune Pistol with Fetid Wounds to get your damage bonuses that way and find something else for clearing trash bombs. Like, Nano Swarm was way too good at clearing trash. I accept that. Um, it's good that we're putting Nebula to rest. But also, can these Spewer weapons have a stronger primary fire? Because they're terrible. And now I don't think anyone's going to touch Nebula ever. Moving on, Cube Gun looks very interesting. The mod has a much higher base damage, which is excellent but also travels slower, being that it's going to get more ticks in as it passes through enemies. I'm pretty interested in this one, to be honest. I think this is going to be a pretty good weapon to put on a build, so I'm going to test that out. Cool change for the cube gun, I like it. Okay, so that's all the weapon changes. We can move on to the mod changes, my favorite. So, Big Bang, fixed, understandable. We knew the dot wouldn't survive since it was definitely unintended. Astral Burst. Yeah, okay, double damage and an extra charge. This is going to be the new meta non-explosive mod for sure. Just saying, I was already theorizing builds for this mod when Tragic was posting stuff on Twitter about it. And I will say that being that this thing does really good damage against weak spots still, I think for bosses that you can reasonably use it on and abuse those weak spot hits, I think it's going to be the strongest mod for it. Like, the spread reduction is icing on the cake too. I think this mod is just going to be absolutely insane for things like Ravager, Annihilation, Alepsis Tora. Like, it's going to be gross. Moving on, Night Guards, I guess, are fixed. They did 45 damage before level 20. Now they're going to be doing 195, which is going to make them much more usable. I don't know if it's really going to do a whole lot for them. We'll see. It's great that they're better, but unless they're going to start scaling with melee damage like Ring of Spears, then they're going to be amazing. But otherwise, probably not so much. I think they used to scale with melee and then they changed that so they didn't and I don't I don't know I'll have to go test that again but I would like them to scale with melee anyway moving on to familiar 
doesn't change much. More duration is not really what Familiar needed. It needed to have a second charge or be able to recast while it was active already, like Sandstorm or Firestorm. So you could abuse things that trigger on cast because it was one of the only mods that you can cast without having to do like the ammo swap thing. So sad face there, missed opportunity, but Familiar, you know, it's good, but it's not great. Prismatic Driver will definitely need to be tested as the damage numbers on paper look absolutely insane, but you'll also have to still be holding down the mod on the target the whole time. And it also it only half scales with explosions since only the burst does, so I don't really know how this is going to play out. Hard to say, going to need to test that, I'll get back to you on that with regarding builds. Rotted Arrow is also interesting, another good weak spot mod to pair with Astral Burst, I think they're going to be great together. Hard to tell how effective it's going to be with like the AoE explosion if that's going to be able to clear stuff. Um, and its damage is like really bad before, so I don't know if this is going to be enough to save it, but it looks good. I like it. We'll see how it works out, so stay tuned for that. Concussive Shot is Explosive Tag now, and that's just silly. It gets a double dip on Summoner, and there's a lot of shenanigans you can do with Explosives, so yeah, Concussive Shot, crazy. Skewer 2.0 got almost a double damage boost, which is already just mind-blowing because it was probably one of the best non-explosive mods in the game so now it's instantly going to make it an s tier mod and we're going to start seeing a lot more non-explosive mod builds for sure especially since they won't need to run wrecking ball to be excellent voltaic rondor didn't get its overload damage increase which makes me uninterested in this mod because it can't reliably hit anything that's not in a confined space which fire also did get a lot stronger but did not get a stronger burn dot and since it doesn't reach half the bosses in the game, it's going to be great for Melting Aberrations and Boss Rush and for Zone Denial with the increased duration. Great, that's awesome. But you're probably not going to see it on many builds since it's going to be very niche because it only works on a couple things. Void Light maybe got fixed. I'm super excited for that. I really like Void Light. Can't wait to incorporate it in my builds. So maybe my Starshot Void Light build will survive even after all the nerfs to Starshot. And that's all the mods. So let's move down to the Prism Fragment changes and at least the noticeable ones. So critical situation is 35% crit chance for being on light armor, which is much more enticing now since it does apply to everything. Melee might want to start moving over to that, to be honest. Jack of all trades got nerfed to 40% damage. Sucks, but whatever. It's not that big of a loss. It's 5% all damage. That's nothing. Master Killer got buffed even more. Monorail players are just rejoicing, I'm sure. I think this is going to be the go-to for things like Monorail, Widowmaker, and Huntsmaster, so we might have to change some of our prisms around because the 35% multiplicative bonus is pretty fat. Sadistic got a huge buff. Like, wow, basically we went from a 12.5% multiplicative damage buff to 50%. So, dots are back, I'm sure. I don't need to test them, but I will test them. But look, dots look like they're eating good now. Sharpshooter got nerfed from 75% damage to 60%. Understandable, we all knew it was the best fragment by far, and there was little competition for range builds. At least now, things like Master Killer and Size Matters might be closer in value. Spectrum also got buffed. Red fragments now give 5% all damage per fragment, and yellow give 5% movement speed. So now you're probably just going to want to run this over Jack of All Trades, since it's the new Jack of All Trades. Unbridled also now works with Engineer's Overclock, which is insane! The infinite Nerudian energy fragment is crying over there because Unbridled is just that good. And it's crazy, they didn't do anything about infinite skill spam either, so Eruption build is staying, I guess. Hoorah! And we got some smaller bug fixes here and there. Okay, so that's the patch notes. Good read, a lot of good stuff there. Pretty much all my builds have to be redone now because they were almost all using Monolith or Nebula or something else in there got changed. So I have a lot of work and testing to do. I'll try to stream this later when I'm off work. But yeah, thank you all for watching and good luck out there, hunters.